The point that he makes in his own writing about speaking about Mike Menser and heavy duty is that he acknowledges that it works. However, in Charles's world, any type of training will work for a time, and then he believes the body will adapt, and then it won't work or get a great result anymore. Hi, I'm John Hart, and welcome back to Mr. America Hart. So, over the years, we've heard and seen battles, I mean, battle royales between uh, different camps on different styles and types and beliefs about training. Of course, on the one hand, we have like this major push for, well, Arnold did it this way. Well, this is the way the guys, the ch most of the champions that we've ever had trained this way in a higher volume fashion. And then all the way on the opposite extreme, we have some high intensity training uh, enthusiasts who have less numbers of champions, uh, but yet do have champions over the years from Dorian Yates to you know, Mike Menser, uh, a lot of athletes, Casey Beator, Aaron Baker, bodybuilders who have had very good success. Uh, you know, I, I count myself more leaning towards the, uh, the higher intensity side. And let's keep that in mind as I'm going through this video now and sharing with you some good thoughts upon uh, which, we can, which we can build, actually, uh, your own training program. And what should you believe? How should you believe? And what type of training is the best? What type of training is, you know, the way to go? And so I'm saying to you, and I'll make the statement right out the gate, uh, every one of these has worked. Every one of them has worked. It's no different than, and I have videos coming up on this soon, uh, different types of cardio, whether we're talking about, you know, low intensity steady state cardio or high intensity hit cardio. Look, they've both worked. Whether we talk about in nutrition, I've been blasted through several of my videos because I use branch chain aminos as opposed to essential aminos. So branch chain aminos I've had great success with over the years. I stick with what I know works. That's it. Essential aminos, I notice no difference. So I stick with the one version that I know works. That's all there is. Uh, people blast me over it, but yet both work. And so here's the thing. In the thumbnail for this video, you'll see I'm holding up both of these books. One is called The Poliquin Principles, and this is written by Charles Poliquin, and he was a strength coach, uh, coached many athletes over the years, and also bodybuilders as well, uh, going way back into the 90s. Uh, he, he had great success and was a major influence on a bodybuilder. I can think of one off the top of my head, Milos Sarchev. Uh, Milos did take some of the principles of training from uh, Charles Poliquin. And so uh, Charles was interesting and had some really great training ideas. Mike Menser. This is the wisdom of Mike Menser. I'll put links for these books, by the way, in the video description for this video so you can find them pretty easily. Uh, but the wisdom of Mike Menser. Mike Menser, as you know, in a lot of my videos I've talked about Mike, had a heavy influence on my training, believed in very short, very brief, high intensity training routines. Okay? So what's the difference between these two guys? Well, Charles, in his training, the volume is much higher. Uh, it's much higher and Mike blasted him, you know, for that, but also some of the exercises that Mike saw as being completely unsafe. And so the two of them had a little bit of a war going in the early 90s. And it played itself out in some magazines and in their writings as well. They both have written about each other in their writings. And here is the thing. I don't negate Charles Poliquin's principles and his training and the ideas that he's done and used on people. He's been very successful. So rather than negate it, I have the man's book. I've had it for over 20 years. And I've studied his stuff. And I've talked to people who've used his stuff in training. Great results. And then thinking about it, some of the principles, just to give you an example, 
One of the principles that Charles uses is in training, he uses different rep cadences. And there's a reason behind it for fatiguing different muscle fibers. There's also the point that he makes in his own writing about speaking about Mike Menser and heavy duty is that he acknowledges that it works. However, in Charles's world, any type of training will work for a time. And then he believes the body will adapt and then it won't work or get a great result anymore. And that's where I kind of start to believe and listen more because I know this to be true. So whether we're talking about uh, heavy duty training, the way that Mike described it, and if any of you have read any of his books over the years, or had a consultation, whether it's with myself or uh, through heavy duty, MikeMenser.com, you'll know that you do know that Mike described different training over the years. Uh, over time, he described lower volume, eventually even less, and then eventually not training hardly at all because you've neared your genetic potential. So he was thinking about, a, he was describing a long-term project throughout all the years of his training. If you piece all the works together, you'll see there was not one single, even though he called it at one point the ideal routine, he had one routine that really was and is very, very good. My favorite of all time. However, it's a routine. And that routine, if you use it, it will not work later on in your training exactly the same way that it worked early on. So there's a tendency, you know, we as humans, we want to jump on back in time and go, wow, that worked for me before. I should go back and I should do that again. And I see it most often with my own clients when it comes to their diets that I've described already that over time, if you follow a diet over time, your metabolism will adjust. It'll try to save your life. Your metabolism will slow down if you stick to a diet for too long. You have to, there are certain things that we do to counteract that along the way. So as you get into a diet, that first two weeks, three weeks that I put somebody onto a proper eating program, they drop a lot of body fat. They drop weight on the scale rather easily. It's, oh, happy day. They're excited. I mean, I look like the man, of course, right? Well, flash forward, six months later, if they have that much fat to lose, six months later, we are eking out and struggling to get a full one pound fat loss in the course of just a week, whereas before they may have lost two, three, four, five pounds in a week. So their tendency, and it's, I've been asked this with almost every single client along the way, their tendency and their suggestion to me is, do you think we should go back to the original diet plan that you gave me? And the answer is always no, because it worked for that time and now it will not work again. Your body is hip to what you just did to it in most recent times. So with weight training and bodybuilding, it's the same thing. If you stick with the same exact routine, even if it's Mike Menser, God bless him, rest in peace, even if it's the ideal routine, you cannot stick to the ideal routine as such without making proper adjustments, which Mike did write about over time. You have to make proper adjustments over time. Then the routine essentially from month one or day one to six months later is not the same routine. You've changed the routine. That was what he described over time. However, Charles goes into a little bit more detail as far as, oh, workout routines, uh, workout order and rep cadence and specifically, uh, how to combine those things along with diet. Now, I know some of you out there right now are saying, heresy, heresy. John, come on, man. You're a high intensity guy. Why are you talking like this? Well, I'll tell you something. Uh, when it comes to working out, when it comes to training, over the years I've been very open-minded. And then on top of it all, I've used principles on my clients as well as myself, but usually first on myself. And then I've seen the results. And the truth of the matter is that, look, a routine such as, I could pick up any one, a shoulder routine that Charles has in his book, or even an arm routine that he has in his book, either one of those, 
a chest, the back routine, whatever. Any one of the routines he has in his book. If you look at it and dissect it, it'll look like, man, this is a lot of volume. Man, this is a lot of work. But when you actually take the routine and do it in real time, in the course of that entire workout that he's describing with proper rest intervals between each exercise, not saying, oh, 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 I'm out of shape or breathing too hard, I need to take even more rest. Well, look, you do if you're really out of shape. But if you just stick to the routine as written with proper time between groupings of exercises, you'll end up finding that the entire workout, there's not one workout that he describes that takes more than 35, 40 minutes. Well, I've done high intensity, heavy duty routines in 30 minutes. We're, we're talking about the same time frame. We're not talking about a two hour workout here. It's the same amount of time. You're doing a lot more work in Charles's world with using Poliquin principles in a short amount of time, but it's very intense. And then in the heavy duty world, Mike Menser's world, the workouts are very intense, but they're using a lot less volume to those workouts. And yes, it does take less time. You know, you can get a high intensity, heavy duty workout in and done with. When Mike trained me, we were usually in Gold's Gym in Venice and out the door in 17 minutes. I do a few warm ups, but from the moment we hit that first real set, I'd be out the door 17 minutes later. That's with setting up other exercises and everything. So we moved, we moved quick, and we only did, you know, under Mike's tutelage, one set of each exercise. And it was done in a certain fashion. And sometimes we did do supersets, pre-exhaust, and things like that. Charles, one of his favorites, one of his favorite principles is to use supersets or, you know, tri-sets or giant sets. And those things can be very, very, very intense. And it depends on how you organize that workout. So look, both work, both of them, both of these training, both of the training that is described with Mike Menser and with Poliquin. I know Mike's probably rolling around in his grave right now. I was friends with him and I know uh, there was a lot that he didn't like about Charles's routines and his workouts. And at the same time, there's a lot that Charles doesn't like or didn't like about Mike's. Both of them, may they rest in peace, now that Charles recently passed. Uh, both of them have moved on. They're no longer here, but they leave behind these great written works. And you can find them online, again, in the links that I'll put in the video description below. And today's message basically is, is that, look, as long as it's intense, as long as you're training hard, that ends up being the main factor. At some point in time, you do need to change your workouts up. You cannot stay with 20 sets of body part, a one and a half hour workout, just training one or two body parts. That's foolishness over time. At some point in time, you cannot do just the same ideal routine from Mike Menser. I know, heresy. Look, you can't do the same thing over time, there has to be changes done to that routine. At some point in time, you can't even do Charles Poliquin's routine, the same one. You have to start being your own thinker. You have to research it and understand the principles that they're talking about. Mike details principles, Mike Menser does in his book, The High Intensity, High Intensity Training the Mike Menser Way. He describes the seven fundamental principles. Study those. They're fabulous. They describe the principles you should apply in all cases to all of your training. And at the same time, Charles Poliquin right here in his own book, he's got a bunch of principles that he brings up that a lot of them make sense and should be applied to your own training in the interest of A, having a better physique, B, being more intellectually sound in your training over the long term. You can't get stuck, can't be so pragmatic, can't just stay with one single. It's the best. It might be the best today and it might be the best this year type of training for you. But one year, two years, three years from now, 
it will no longer be the best. You have to have changes done to your routine. So that's it for today. I'm telling you, they both work. <laughs> uh, I just gave you two guys that really didn't like each other when they were alive. And I'm telling you, uh, it's a great mix. You should look into it, both of them, get a hold of the book, study them. If you need, go to my website, hit me up, we'll do a consultation. I'll share the information I have with you in more detail. That's it for today. From my heart to you, John Hart, before you go, off to my left, you're going to see the circle pop up any moment right now. That's the subscribe button for my channel. If you tap that one, YouTube will notify you every time I have a new video pop on up. So if you're interested in that type of thing, and you like the videos that I'm doing, please give that one a tap. Now, down and off to your left, below those suggested videos, you're going to find a thumbs up buddy button. Hit that thumbs up button. It helps the channel out greatly and I really appreciate it. That's it today. I look forward to seeing you again soon.